Hey friends, today I'm reading a book called Sparrow Girl. It's by Sarah Pennypacker, illustrator Yoko Tanaka. And this is another book of historical fiction. This is a, a true story of something that happened in China between the years of 1958 and 1962. They decided they got, wanted to get rid of pests. So they wanted to get rid of ro um, rodents, sparrows, flies, and mosquitoes. Well, as we learn from reading the book about ecosystems, every animal has a role to play. And if you take one out, it's catastrophic. So this story is highlighting when they tried to get rid of the sparrows. Well, what do sparrows eat? They eat insects. So without the sparrows, locusts came and decimated the rice crop, which contributed to, to killing between 30 and 40 million people during a famine, which a famine is when you don't have enough food to eat. So this is completely fictional. This little girl is not true, but this is what really happened. I mean, this incident really happened. There's really a war with the sparrows, but this little girl is made up. So it's called historical fiction. Sparrow Girl. And you can look it up on the internet. It's really pretty interesting to read what happened. And the illustrations in this book are particularly beautiful. One day, not too long ago, war was declared in China. Sparrows are our enemies. They eat too much grass. We must drive them from the land. Older brother held out the bag of firecrackers that father had given him to help fight the war. But I like sparrows, Ming Li said quietly, walking home with older brother. She looked up and tried to imagine the sky empty, silent. Oh, we have a glare. Hope you can see it. Mother and father were talking about the plan, too. The village barn is empty now. Next year it will be full of grain. So they decided that if they killed all the sparrows, they'd have more food. But actually it's going to work just the opposite. I could help you plant more seeds in the spring, Father Ming Lee said, and weed the fields, and you're not a farmer, Father patted her head. You're only a small girl. That night, Ming Lee couldn't sleep. Something bothered her, scratching at her thoughts like a monkey. She crept to older brother's sleeping mat. How will the other birds know, she whispered, shaking his shoulder. Older brother rubbed his eyes and scowled in the moonlight. Won't our noise parade frighten the other birds, too? What if the nightingales fly away, or the swallows, or the pigeon? Younger sister, your brain is as small as a sparrow's, hissed older brother. Our leader's plans are always perfect. They told us at school. Now go to sleep. The next morning, a tremendous din woke Ming Li. She ran to the window. A sea of people flooded the village, clanging gongs, crashing cymbals, beating drums, and shouting in their loudest voices. Firecrackers exploded like gunshots. Dress warmly, Mother said, handing her a rice cake. You will be gone all day and into the evening. Ming Li and older brother picked up their pots and spoons and went outside. The villagers were running through the streets, making so much noise the ground itself rumbled. They were looking up to search for the enemy sparrows, but not down to see if they might trample a small girl. Ming Li clutched older brother's hand. He led her far away from the thundering crowd and into the orchard. Now remember, this really happened. So between 1958 and 1962 is when this um, time period was. And to get rid of all the sparrows in, in their area, it took about three days. It really worked, which is really a bad thing. Older brother stopped under a grove of apricot trees and lit a firecracker. Boom! A cloud of sparrows rose and flew across to a row of pear trees. He followed and lit another firecracker beneath them. Ming Li clapped her hands over her ears and squeezed her eyes shut. But the firecracker's loud golden sparks were exploding inside her head now. She wanted to fly away like a sparrow to someplace high and safe. Ming Li was out set out for the road, but just as she reached it, she saw something fall from the sky like a stone. A group of villagers saw it, too, and hurried over. Oh, it's been frightened to death, Ming Li cried. We have to stop. Dead sparrows don't eat grain, crowed an old man beside her. More birds fell to the ground, lifeless. Aye, we're winning the sparrow war, cheered the others. So the birds were so afraid, they started dropping out of the sky, dead. And they were convinced if they killed all those sparrows, like I said, that they would have more rice. But that's not going to be the case. Ming Li ran home when she climbed to the peak of the roof to check on Pigeon. 
but his cage was empty too. Older brother must have sent his pet out yesterday. Suddenly a plump silver bird flew toward her. You've come home, Ming Li, held out her arms for Pigeon to land on. But he only fluttered in the air for a moment and then fell with a soft thud on the curved clay tiles. Pigeon lay limp and still except for his heart pounding beneath the pearly feathers of his breast. And even the and then even that was still. Tears filled Ming Li's eyes. She tucked the bird into her pocket, climbed down from the roof, and set out for the orchards. Older brother was standing beneath a walnut tree, preparing to set off a firecracker. Ming Li touched his shoulder, his elbow, sorry. Wait. Older brother's face crumpled and his shoulders fell. He dropped his firecracker and together they buried Pigeon under the walnut tree. The noise parade will kill all the sparrows in China. Maybe all the birds. We have to do something, Ming Li said. Will you help me? Older brother nodded, his eyes red. But no one can disobey our leader. What can we do? Maybe some of the sparrows that fall to the ground are still alive, like Pigeon was. We could rescue them. All that afternoon, whenever she saw a bird fall, Ming Li hurried to the spot. Time after time, she was too late. But then, just as the lanterns were being lit, a small brown bird dropped inside a quince bush, then fluttered up for a moment. Ming Li's hope rose with it. She ran to the bush and found a sparrow struggling to its feet. She scooped the exhausted bird into her jacket. You're safe now, little friend, she whispered. Around her, people were walking home, congratulating one another. In two more days, there won't be a single sparrow left in all of China. Ming Li wrapped her jacket more closely around her. She could feel the bird's tiny heart beating against her own. Yes, there will, she promised. She found older brother in the crowd. Just one, she told him, letting him peek inside. Together they brought the little sparrow to Pigeon's empty cage. Ming Li filled the water cup and broke her rice cake bits into it. The next morning, she and older brother hurried out to search for birds to save. If any villagers were nearby when Ming Li ran to the fallen sparrow, older brother distracted them. Look, to the west, a flock of enemies! By afternoon, the birds were falling from the sky at a terrible rate. They're like raindrops, said older brother. The sky is raining birds. No, said Ming Li. They're like teardrops. The sky is crying birds. By nightfall, they had rescued four more sparrows. This is so sad, I can hardly stand it. On the third day, the sky was nearly empty. Still, the villagers poured through the streets, clanging gongs, clashing cymbals, beating drums, and shouting in their loudest voices. Ming Li and older brother found only two more birds alive. Seven sparrows, said Ming Li later, looking into the cage on the rooftop, when there used to be thousands. Seven sparrows, said older brother, when there could have been none. That night, Ming, Ming Li lay awake. Her sparrows would need room to fly soon, but if she left them loose, the villagers would hunt them. So this is the part of the story that's not true. Um, this little girl isn't real, and, which, and her capturing the sparrows didn't really happen, but the actual trying to get rid of all the sparrows in China is true. The next morning, she arose before dawn. She hurried to the rooftop and climbed down with the cage and ran with it through the fields to the village barn. She released the birds inside. Someday you'll fly under the sky again, she promised. Each day after school, Ming Li visited her sparrows. She watched them fly between the rafters and swoop down to peck at worms and bugs. But when spring came, Ming Li worried. As soon as the first crop was harvested, the farmers would open up the barn. Where could she hide her sparrows then? Already, father and older brother had begun planting. Ming Li ached to go with them. Let me help you, she begged each day. You are not a farmer, her father smiled. You are only a small girl. One day in the midsummer, Ming Li noticed her father looked worried when he came back from the fields. There's to be a meeting of all the farmers tomorrow, he said, in front of the village barn. The village barn? What if they went inside? So they're figuring out that they've made a bad mistake. The next morning, Ming Li followed her father. She hid beside the barn. The farmer sat in a circle, their faces serious. 
I will have no grain this year, said one. The locusts are eating it all. If you don't know what a locust is, it's a vegetable. I mean, it's a, sorry, it's an insect, and they eat plants and grains, and they're, um, I mean, they can ruin a whole entire field of grains in very quick work. The plums in my orchard are full of worms, cried another. Weevils are eating my rice, added a third, and the grasshoppers are chewing through the beanstalks. There will be famine, said Ming Li's father. Our families will starve. And then there was silence while the truth settled over them, cold and dark as a winter night. So here we are talking about the ecosystems. They've taken out the birds, and now all the insects and the worms don't have any birds to eat them, and so they're multiplying and they're wreaking havoc by destroying all the crops. <clears throat> Ming Li couldn't help herself. She ran out from beside the barn. It's because there are no sparrows. There are no sparrows to eat the insects now. Ming Li, go home, cried her father. But the eldest farmer held up his hand. She is right, he said. The sparrows were never our enemies. What does it matter, asked the second farmer. What's done is done. Ming Li whispered something in her father's ear. He stood. Show us. Ming Li led the farmers to the barn and threw open the doors. She held her breath. How great would her punishment be? <clears throat> Inside, the sparrows rose from the rafters and flew out into the fresh summer air. The farmers gasped in wonder. Your daughter brings us a miracle, they cried. She brings us seven miracles. From this day, sparrows will be safe in our village, and we will tell everyone we meet from other villages about the wisdom of the sparrow girl. Yes, agreed Ming Li's father. My daughter is a sparrow girl, but she is something more. He lifted her to his shoulders. Ming Li is a true farmer. And so here's a note that actually talks about the Sparrow War. If you're interested, I looked it up on the internet a little bit and found out more information about it. It was quite interesting because before I read this book a few years ago, I didn't even know anything about this. And I've told you before, I really enjoy reading about um, historical events, especially things that I didn't know about before, and I like to read about them in the form of a story. So this one, of all the ones I've read, is more of fiction, where the whole story of the little girl is made up, but the actual um, Sparrow War is true. So I hope you enjoy it. Happy reading. Tell me what you think.